Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes commentary. This one is for the first Mer Merry Melody short of 1932 called Pagan Moon, directed by Rudolf Ising. It's uh, another one-shot short, um, and there's really not much to this one. Um, now, in case you're wondering where I got this print from, this was uh, from, a, from a Laserdisc collection. This one has not been properly remastered and released on DVD. I like this opening shot, though, of the moon rising up like that. It's, you know, you can see that they're at least trying something new, you know, playing with light and whatnot. And I like her dance as well. Though I've got to say, the two main characters remind me of, of the two main characters from the previous Merry Melodies, um, uh, that, which is the red-headed baby. And nothing wrong with that. You know, at least they're doing new stuff and these aren't exactly Mickey Mini clones, which is a big plus in my book, but there's nothing really special here. I do like the song, though. And dancing's pretty cool as well. Though it's clear this is in Hawaii, or thereabouts at least. It's crazy to think that this was um, actually made before um, uh, Hawaii became a state as well, so... I do like this uh, little monkey. <laughs> he just doesn't, he doesn't care that he's hit the big, big monkey. It's like, bang. And we got the dancing tree again! Although it's not as sexually suggestive. Um, I mean, they, they've reused the animation from Congo Jazz, which is, um, I think, the second or so... Um, Bosco cartoon, but this gag I didn't quite get. I mean, they're dancing, goes in there, the can hits, the thing hits the can, and the bird goes in the nest. I don't, I don't get it. Yep, gotta love the crocodile, which uses the same design as some of the previous Merry Melodies and Bosco shorts that have had a crocodile. Like I said, this one's not too remarkable. I do like the backgrounds, though. I mean, you know, they're serviceable, but but it's quite quite nice. Yeah, we're just frolicking, frolicking. It's a pretty fast turtle. <laughs> That's one way to use a shell and then these flowers turn into hands or whatnot very strange then they're on the boat and I will say uh, you know when he loses loses his um, ukulele and he goes in the water I do like how they're at least trying something new which is um, underwater scenes which they hadn't really done I mean they've done a few like little fish tanks and this and that, but, you know, with all the bubbles everywhere and whatnot, this would have been actually a bit of a challenge. I mean, all those bubbles would have had to have been animated. No computer help here, folks. <laughs> That's a pretty big fish. But weirdly enough, it's... How on earth is would this piano be perfectly in tune after smashing to the bottom of this... Uh, I'm assuming it's a lake. But, oh, we'll go with it. Yeah, you've got a generic giant octopus there. But doesn't this little kid have to breathe? <laughs> but, I've, but I've also noticed this sort of simulate the underwater, I mean... You've obviously got the bubbles, but I like how it's got the sort of like a misty type effect. So at least try something new. I like those little fishes in the back just looking all happy and then dancing shoes. I mean, you know, people might have died when this boat went down, but we won't go into that. Now, this is the original Under the Sea, right there. 
pretty obvious they got got their influence by this. No, not really. <laughs> Let's uh, see what he can do. I like how he, his um, tentacles just t turn into hands when required. <laughs> I like the expressions on his face. Just He's really, really into this. <laughs> Well, the bubbles have returned, but now we've got a got a shark, or well, actually not a shark, but a some sort of a big aggressive fish. See, I thought it was the same fish as before. I mean, that would have been would have been much better if they had foreshadowed this fish earlier on. Well, maybe they did. I can't tell. <laughs> but I like this. Like the bird pops the bubble. And then he just loses all his feathers. Pop. Okay, the explosion must have been that bad that <laughs> loses its feathers. So yeah, that was Pagan Moon. Not particularly mar remarkable, but... Oh well, I've seen worse. And I do like how it ends with both of them being carried away in this uh, pelican's beak. I'm sure the pelican enjoys having two, two young... Uh, young children in there and I like how it ends like that as well and uh, as always so long folks please consider subscribing and until next time